गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल आई एम डॉक्टर गीतांजलि भट्ट शर्मा फ्रॉम उत्तराखंड ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी टुडे वी विल लर्न द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ हॉरिजॉन्टल एंड वर्टिकल इंट्रीगेशन ऑफ फर्म्स एंड द सोशल कॉस्ट ऑफ मोनोपोली पावर इंक्लूडिंग डेट वेट लॉस द टॉपिक्स वी विल कवर इन दिस सेशन आर मीनिंग ऑफ ऑरिजेंटल इंट्रीगेशन मीनिंग ऑफ वर्टिकल इंट्रीगेशन बेनिफिट्स ऑफ वर्टिकल एंड हॉरिजेंटल इंट्रीगेशन डिफ्रेंशिएशन बिटवीन हॉरिजेंटल एंड वर्टिकल इंट्रीगेशन टाइप्स ऑफ वर्टिकल इंट्रीगेशन कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ सोशल कॉस्ट ऑफ मोनोपोली पावर एंड फाइनली द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ डेड वेट लॉस नाउ लेट्स डिस्कस वट इज हॉरिजेंटल इंट्रीगेशन हॉरिजेंटल इंट्रीगेशन रिफर्स वैन सेपरेट कंपनीज विद इन द सेम और सिमिलर इंडस्ट्री कंबाइन टू बिकम अ सिंगल कंपनी हॉरिजेंटल इंट्रीगेशन ऑर्गेनाइजेज मल्टीपल कंपनीज विद इन वन कंपनी स्ट्रक्चर लेट एस अंडरस्टैंड दिस विद अ एग्जाम्पल फॉर एग्जाम्पल स्मार्टफोन मैन्युफैक्चर माइट हॉरिजोंटली इंट्रीगेट बाय एक्वायरिंग अदर स्मार्टफोन मेकर्स और कंपनीज इन्वॉल्व इन रिलेटेड टेक्नोलॉजीज लाइक सॉफ्टवेयर डेवलपमेंट एंड हार्डवेयर कंपोनेंट्स now we will understand how horizontal integration works horizontal integration works in three categories first merging with another company when two companies merge two separate entities create a new joint organization after that acquiring another company an acquisition occur when one company outright takes over the operations of another company and finally expanding internally a company chooses to strategically change course and apply more resources in a different way for example a restaurant can expand offer catering companies or a beverage manufacturers may branch off to make food products now benefits of horizontal integration the benefits of horizontal integration are economies of scale increased market share diversification of product or services reduction in competition and increase customer base now moving on to the drawbacks of horizontal integration horizontal integration drawbacks are challenges in operational integration like the integration of corporate operations technologies processes and people can be difficult and can result in employee turnover and loss value the second one is redu it reduces flexibility an organization grow larger they can become less adaptable to change in the marketplace like a small firms may be easier to manage and able to bring innovation to the market more quickly as compared to the large companies the third drawback can be regulatory and legal issues and finally the fourth drawback may be failed expectations now the second concept is vertical integration what is vertical integration mm-hmm. vertical integration means when a company or a firm able to control several vertical levels of the supply chain chain vertical integration allows firms or companies to integrate and own different parts of a supply chain directly we can understand vertical integration through a example like the oil and gas industries the oil companies owning and operating their own refineries and distribution network to reduce dependence on external suppliers now what are the benefits of vertical integration the benefits of vertical integration are as follows it helps in establishing independence it helps in managing cost it opens new market it build quality assurance it helps in creating economies of scale it increasing knowledge it improving marketability maximizing market control and finally lowering prices these are the benefits of vertical integration now let's discuss the main difference between horizontal and vertical integration like horizontal integration means the acquisition of business processes that are at a similar stage of supply chain whereas vertical integration 
This strategy includes complete control by a company over and or more than one stage in the product's distribution. Now, horizontal integration. In horizontal integration, the businesses of the acquired and the acquiring company are same in horizontal integration. Whereas in vertical integration, both acquired and acquiring are into different business lines. The objective of horizontal integration is to take control over competitor's business with a vision of growth, whereas the objective of vertical integration is to strengthen the process of supply chain and to improve access to customers of competitors. In horizontal integration, competition level is high as the number of competitors are more, whereas in vertical integration, there is less competition level as compared to horizontal integration. In horizontal integration, focus is more on supply chain, procurement and operations. Whereas in vertical integration, focus is more on research and development for the achievement of best com component. In horizontal integration, the risk factor is very low. Whereas in vertical integration, the risk factor is very high as compared to horizontal integration. Apart from these differentiate, differentiation, horizontal integration, there is a very quick scaling and in vertical integration, there is limited potential of scaling. Now, what are the types of vertical integration? The types of vertical integrations are categorized into three points, forward integration, backward integration and balance integration. First of all, we will discuss forward integration. Forward integration is a form of vertical integration in which a company owns and control the businesses ahead in its industry's value chain. For example, we can understand it by an example. For example, retail venues. Retail venues, when the product is available directly to the customers, it is known as forward integration. Like Mintra. Mintra, a e-commerce startup, launches its own logistics services to serve customer on time. The next one is backward integration. Backward integration is a business strategy where a company takes control of its supply chain by acquiring operations that produce raw material or intermediate goods that it needs for its production process. This type of upstream movement in the supply chain is backward integration. We can understand it in a better way through example. For example, when a popcorn company buys a corn farm, they are acquiring steps in the process that are required before the product can be sold. So, this is an example of backward integration. Anything needed before a product can be finished is a part of backward integration. Now, the next integration is balance integration. Balance integration, it is a vertical integration strategy in which a company merges with other businesses to control supply chain upstream or downstream operations. A company that succeeds at balance integration has control over a significant portion of the supply chain. For example, Apple have pursued balance integration as well as Amazon is also a very good example of balance integration. Balance integration is when companies acquired steps in the supply chain, both preceding and following its own link in the chain. Now the 16th slide, social cost of monopoly power. We will understand the concept of social cost of monopoly power. There is a social cost to monopoly power because it leads to reduction in consumer surplus. Means consumer pay higher prices of goods and services than they would in a more competitive market. Monopoly power also reduces incentives for innovation and efficiency as the monopolist does not face the same pressure to improve their product 
or reduce cost this can result in overall economic welfare for society in a monopoly there is no supply curve as monopolists are not price takers in a competitive market marginal cost depicts the social cost of producing a product the demand curve depicts the social benefit of producing the product the competitive price or output is determined where marginal cost intersects the demand curve monopoly power can lead to higher prices for consumer and reduce output resulting in allocative inefficiency and dead weight loss this loss represent the reduction in overall economic welfare due to monopoly's ability to restrict output and change higher prices than in a competitive market additionally monopolies may stifle innovation and competition leading to long term negative effects on consumer choice and economic growth overall the social cost of monopoly power includes both the direct effects on consumer and the broader impact of economic efficiency and innovation now what is dead weight loss a dead weight loss occur when supply and demand are not in equilibrium which leads to market inefficiency the monopoly pricing creates a dead weight loss because the firm foregoes transaction with the consumers the dead weight loss is a potential gain that did not go to the producer or to the consumer there is a loss in economic surplus within the market during the dead weight loss we can understand the dead weight loss through a graphical presentation so here is a graphical presentation of dead weight loss now as shown in the graph because of the monopolistic restriction of output we can see there are people who would be willing to pay to the marginal cost who are not being served the reduction output in the figure is the difference between q2 minus q1 and the shaded area in the graph represent loss of economic value from a monopoly and this this loss is called dead weight loss therefore monopoly creates dead weight loss because some consumers who would be willing to pay for the product up to its marginal cost are not being served now what are the causes of dead weight loss the causes of dead weight loss are imperfect market taxes or subsidies price ceiling such as price control and rent control and finally price floor such as minimum wage and living wage laws now to conclude the concept of social cost of monopoly power and dead weight loss there are the points the integration strategy is used by the firm to increase market share become more diversified and eliminating the cost of developing new product and introducing to the market dead weight loss refer to the loss of economic efficiency that occurs when the equilibrium quantity of a good service is not maximized due to market distortions such as taxes subsidies or price control it represent the reduction in consumer and producer surplus that arises from market inefficiencies in conclusion we can say dead weight loss highlight the inefficiencies in market caused by innovation that deviate from the free market equilibrium resulting in socialist welfare loss therefore monopoly create dead weight loss because sub consumers who would be willing to pay for the product up to its marginal cost are not be served and when the total output is less than social optimal there arises a situation of dead weight loss thank you learners for your patience and attention